Hello and welcome to the first episode of Classic Topology Problems. In this series, I'm looking at just the everyday things that people run into when they're new to polygonal modeling and kind of giving you some simple solutions for it. So the first is lots of triangles or a convergence of triangles, which you will get if you create a sphere like so. And so here's the problem. We have all these triangles converging right here in the middle. It also happens with a cylinder as well. So you can actually activate cap segments here and you see the similar problem happening here. And I'm going to show you how I can fix this. First of all, I'm going to give this a gray material, gray object color. All right, I'm going to give this, let's say 32 sides and this is 32. So we can just apply at a poly or we can simply right click and convert it to edible poly. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this vertex and I'm going to just grow this. All right, so there's a free collection of scripts called Rapid Tools, and simply what you do is you go into Border, you select the border, and then you can go into Rapid Tools, Topology, Rapid Quad Cap. I've got that set to Shift 1, so I press Shift 1, and there we go. If you don't like this orientation, you can switch to Vertex Mode, and you can select, for example, these two vertices. So you can see how here we have the center, so I'm going to select one on the left, one on the right, Shift 1, I'm getting this. I can select, let's say, two over here, deselect this one, and then two over here, deselect that one. So just make sure it's the same on the left and right. Shift one, now we get this. What you can also do is, let's say I'm going to just hold shift while extruding and scaling and just kind of getting a little detail here. I can just deselect opposite edges and then bridge. There we go. All right, now for the sphere, this kind of topology may be useful for creating this kind of detail. So for example, if I just select these vertices and plane on the Z axis, I can then just, let's say, create some detail. So, all right, let's say something like this. All right, and so, as long as you keep those triangles flat, they won't really bother you. However, if you want to create some sort of router area here, so let's say for example, I select this, just kind of move it up and then shrink and then kind of get this. You can see, let's say I want to create this kind of half spherical effect. I'm going to just use support loops really quick here. All right, there we go. So I'm going to apply turbo smooth. You can see here, because this material is not very really reflective, it doesn't seem to be a problem, but I'm gonna give a more chrome reflective material. We're gonna render this to see what the problem is. All right, so you can see we get this kind of distortion effect happening here. You can see we have this kind of almost like iris effect happening here, which we want to avoid in many situations, unless of course you're trying to create this effect. So we need to kind of get rid of these triangles. What we can do is we can do some polygon surgery. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is just select this and then just grow and delete. And let's count how many edges there are here. I'm gonna double click here and you can see, if you press seven by default to activate your statistics, you will see that it's 32 right here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, a way we can avoid that actually is to create a box. And I'm going to give it even dimensions here and then turbo smooth and then spherify. I'm going to scale this up here. All right. So we've got this. Essentially, this is another way of solving this problem is by not starting from a sphere, but starting from the box and then just using Spherify after self dividing. What you can also do is you can actually create a sphere. What you can do is create an eight sided, eight segmented sphere and then simply go into edit poly then simply remove these top and bottom edges. And once again, do the process of turbo smooth and spherify. But of course, you have changed the topology now. So if you want some sort of detail that kind of loops around here, it's much easier with this kind of topology here. For example, now I can just you know, select these kinds of polygons and now I've got this kind of rotating detail. But with this, because of the topology, it's much more difficult to do so. However, what we can do here, remember we had 32 sides here. So now what I can do is let's say, delete the bottom half. And if we count how many edges there are here, you can see it's all 32. So I'm gonna press shift A 
to quick align it right here, kind of move it up. All right, at this point, what we can do is simply attach this. All right, now we have to carefully scale this and move this down. So you can scale it right there if you don't want it to be perfectly half circle. And then you simply scale it, move into position. I don't know about this doctor, this is a very dangerous operation here. We never had this series of a case before. Nurse, prepare the bed. I can solve any issue. So I'm going to press S to activate snaps. Alt D for axis constraints. Make sure the Z axis is active by clicking on it. And then simply left click on this and then simply snap right here. So because of axis constraints, if axis constraints was off, it would actually end up moving here. You can see how now it's off center. But with axis constraints, Alt D, it's only going to move according to this currently selected axis or axes. You can have two. And if you end up actually selecting something, so for example, if I end up clicking here and deselecting everything, you can just press Control Z. It's going to keep your same axis, but it's just going to go back to your previous selection. Now it's going to snap only on the Z axis, and there we go. Alt D S. We can now just scale a little bit. Let's snap it right here. There we go. Now, for example, I can just select these edges and I can let's say bridge notice how we get this really strange effect happening here so this is actually a very nice pattern actually I like this pattern so I'm going to quickly just duplicate this off do some experimenting here because I kind of like the way it turned out here this could be a great way to generate some sort of interesting geometric patterns here so Another example of happy accidents, getting these kinds of interesting things just by accident. So I'll get back to that. So in order to actually avoid that issue, what we can do is simply just bridge two edges first, loop, deselect, and then bridge. And now this way we get a much more sensible solution. There we go. We've nicely attached it. Another happy landing. Oh, and in Blender, when you create a cube, what you can do is just press tab. You can right click and subdivide. Open this up. Here you can change the number of cuts and you can increase the smoothness to get a perfect kind of sphere. And so notice how I'm clicking here. It seems to be that 10 is the max. So however, if you manually enter a number here, you can see I can go past 10. And thank you for the person in the comments who pointed that out. I always enjoy learning new things from the comment section. So please keep it up. So this is how you can solve and avoid the issue of lots of triangles, convergence of triangles. Thank you for watching and take care.